Jedi and Force wielders. It's Mason Wiley here. Today I'm going to review one of my favorite Star Wars games that I recently made a series of videos on my gaming channel, Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. Along with the review, I will also give my final thoughts towards the end on this game, seeing that I already covered everything in the videos on my gaming channel and beat the game twice. So without further ado, Start your engines, strap into your cockpit, and let's take a journey down intergalactic memory lane with Star Wars Episode I Racer. Before I dive into what people can expect in this game, I want to tell a story about how I got into this game and how I was able to play it again. Story time! When I was about 8, 9, or 10 years old, I fell in love with Star Wars. And while I was born in the early 2000s, I am also a diehard 90s kid. Around the time of when I got interested in Star Wars The Clone Wars, I was given the Star Wars Episode 1 Racer PC game as a kid by my mom because she knew how much of a diehard Star Wars fan I was. I played that game for hours on end on my own laptop and wouldn't stop. However, I never completed the game and only saw the cutscene of Tatooine. Then unfortunately, my old laptop with the disk drive was no more, and I had a few computers with no disk drives as I started getting older. I started losing hope that I wouldn't find a computer with a disk drive that the game could work on even though I had dreams of buying one. Then after I got my new Windows tablet PC hybrid computer during my junior year of high school, the game came out on GOG about a few years later for its May the 4th deal and I instantly got it on this computer I have now and it brought me back to the days of playing that game I missed the most. I will never stop playing it. And this game will always bring me back to when I first played it as a kid. Anyway, diving into what you can expect, there are so many things in this game you can find. Pod racers, pilots, familiar characters, other planets, etc. With all of this in one game, it gives the feeling that this is Star Wars. As for races, they're usually pretty easy on the first pod racing circuit, aka the amateur pod racing circuit. However, as you progress, the difficulty level will slowly and dramatically increase, depending on who you race as and against. You will find what I mean in the last two major circuits of the game, the semi-pro pod racing circuit and the galactic pod racing circuit. What's really cool is that when you finish in first place in every race in all three circuits, you unlock a fourth circuit, the Invitational Pod Racing Circuit. The difficulty levels vary in the four races of that circuit. Along with races, you get to unlock some of the familiar racers from Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, as well as some newcomers as well. However, these kinds of things are very different depending on what platform you play this game on. For example, the PC, Mac OS, Nintendo 64, and Sega Dreamcast versions have what I just explained, and the Game Boy Color Edition has bits and pieces of it, all the while making it in a way to support the GBC platform. Now prepare yourself. This is one of the most frustrating moments I ever had when playing this game, which will show just how incredibly difficult it can get. 
Whenever you are going really fast and all of a sudden you strike a wall with one of your pod racer engines or you smash into it as a whole, you will lose some valuable time before you're revived, which can make your first place streak go downhill if another racer passes you by. And it gets worse when you do it time and time again. I found that out while playing this game off camera one time and again while recording the videos for my gaming channel. That's only one thing that frustrates me during a race. And you may have also done this yourself, upgrading your racer to be more fast and agile than other racers on the track. And that works, to a degree. If you screw up more than one time during a race, your parts will start failing on you and you either have to purchase or replace other parts or switch to a different racer. If you purchase pit joints from Wado, they fix some of your parts in some sort of period of time, which is nice because the pit droids are another thing that makes this game feel like a racing game in Star Wars. Oh yeah, I almost forgot this. Can anyone please tell me how I can get Jin Riso and Sai Younga in this game? I saw that they're unlockable through a key combination in the PC version, and I'm wondering if I can accomplish that on the GOG version of this game. I know that they can be unlocked through cheat codes on the Nintendo 64 version, but I never tried that. So can any of you guys out there please tell me how I can unlock these two racers in the PC version with the key combination? Pretty please? Moving along. Along with really stunning visuals and graphics, you can also expect to see really awesome CGI cutscenes of different planets most of these races will t t take place on. Also, the background music is amazing. Being a music enthusiast, I absolutely admire the work of John Williams. During the game intro, a race, a cutscene, and even during the credits, some of his music from The Phantom Menace and or The Empire Strikes Back can be heard everywhere in this game, and it's gorgeous. view out of the way, it's time for my final thoughts on this amazing game. This game, as a whole, is a great combination of the recreation of the epic pod racing scene from The Phantom Menace and the addition of new planets from the Outer Rim. If any of these planets are not in the Outer Rim, please let me know. The controls are also a nice touch for this game. Not only can you feel like you're in a pod racer, but you can also feel what it's like to digitally control a pod racer on a keyboard in the comfort of your own home. The same explanation I just gave also applies to the N64 version, but with the experience being the feeling of controlling a pod racer with your controller. This also goes for the Star Wars Racer arcade game that you would see in arcades anywhere. However, its design, digitally and physically, actually makes the arcade look like you're about to enter the pod racing leagues in Star Wars. The original music is another key element that makes this game absolutely great. Overall, this game was a must have for me when I had the physical edition for PC and when I saw it on GOG, and it's still a must have game today. And with that my friends, my final rating for this game is a 10 out of 10. I hope you all enjoyed this review on Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. May the Force be with you. Always.